Support Sinclair and listen ad-free. Go to patreon.com slash our Sinclair. Our Sinclair is also brought to you by the Div MMC Future from the future was 8bit.com. Quit waiting on tapes and fooling around with WAV files and load your games instantly with the Div MMC Future, a jumperless, switchless SD storage solution for all ZX Spectrums, from the 16K all the way to the plus three. Get yours today at the future was 8bit.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be playing Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger! Now, if you watched last week's episode of no. our Sinclair, uh, when Brent was on... That's why. Uh, I said, Cliffhanger, oh yeah, <laughs> it's a side-scrolling uh, platform game from Ocean based on the movie. No, I hope not, because that's of, not the one I played. None of those words were correct. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I didn't watch the show. <laughs> Every single one of those was wrong. But I thought we might talk about the movie Cliffhanger okay. anyway. I've I never seen all of the movie. But you've seen 20 minutes of it. I've seen enough. Yeah, guys okay. hanging off ledges and climbing, Sylvester Stallone. And, and I wanted to ask you about, you know, these days climbing is, is a big deal. You got people that are into rock climbing, you know, yeah. you got the climbing walls and the gyms and stuff. When you were a kid, there was none of that, right? We climbed actual walls and trees, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the thing that you're most proud of scaling? Let's see. Well, getting to all, getting to the barrel mound top in Moundsville, that's a pretty tall uh, scale. You know, my, uh, my, uh, uh, my uncle and aunt lived in Charleston. They had a mountain behind their house, directly behind it. They'd cut part of the mountain out. I remember scaling to the top of that and feeling pretty proud until I almost slipped to my death. <laughs> Because behind it was a sheer cliff, oh my and it would just slide off and die. Mm. Um, let's see. Me and Teresa were uh, going out geocaching one time, and we scaled to the top of this crazy steep cliff out in Coonskin Park. Wow, that was pretty. That was pretty good. I can't imagine you geocaching. Oh, dude, I'm a geocaching. I'm a cache master. Mm. That's You're right. like cash man. And I had to do it back in the old days where you just had like the world's crummiest GPS. <laughs> it had a little arrow that went like this. It's mm. like, well, it's this stinks. But yeah, I mean, what do you mean you can't imagine me geocaching? I just can't imagine you traipsing in the woods. Oh, dude, I'm a Boy Scout, man. I would, you know, I okay. did it all. I've okay. done it all. I, I'll trace. I'll trace. Buddy. And and geocaching because I've never done it before. <laughs> you find things, right? Like somebody buries something somewhere, and when you find yeah, it, not so much buries usually, more like stashes something or puts it in like an empty tree or underneath something. What do you find? Like, what, what, are, what are some of the common things you find when you're out on a geocache? I mean, most of the time, it's you'll find a box, and inside the box will be uh, some wrapping, and then inside that, you'll be a booklet. You'll sign it, maybe write a little message, and then oh, sometimes okay. there's, you'll take something and put something in. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's nothing of any consequence. It's little like. Uh, you know, little like fridge magnets or um, little like uh, keychains, stuff like that. Okay. You know, yeah. That's a cool little hobby. I wonder if people still do that. You think? Oh, it's absolutely, still a thing? they still do. Yeah, mm. yeah, they they still do it. Yeah, you know, uh, when, when I was younger, uh, I went, I climbed all over the place. You know, we, I mean, I wasn't hooked up to like lines and did you ever do? Hooks, I was like gonna say, crap. did you ever do rappelling or anything oh, like that? I've rappelled people since the day I was born, <laughs> but no, I've never done any rappelling. You kidding me? Repelling? I, I just kind of see you. As, as I don't doing like the idea of hanging, uh, devote myself to the cable wrapped around my hiney. It I don't is like a little that. scary to think about that. No, unless I'm hooked to a cherry picker, I'm not interested. <laughs> what about you? Um, when I was in Korea, <laughs> uh, there was a big mountain behind my house, and I used to climb that mountain yeah. uh, almost every day. Like a proper mountain? I mean, it was a proper mountain. It was a big, tall... I mean, it wasn't like the Rocky Mountains, but it was like a West virginia size mountain. Yeah. You know? And so I, that, that was good exercise. I enjoy climbing. I've never done the rock climbing thing. No. Um, because, like you said, I feel nervous about, you know, the being attached to a piece of rope. Yeah. Um, I did watch a documentary about these guys that free solo. Yeah. And I uh, and and the, basically they do all the crazy repelling type stuff except they do it with no equipment whatsoever. I just read a guy got killed. Doing yeah. That. A, a very prominent member right. of that community just died. And yeah. He fell to his death. Yeah. You know? All it takes is one wrong move. Well, I, I would never do that. <laughs> frankly, <laughs> you know, it's like jumping out there and play with no parachute. I mean, you might bounce and get lucky. Are you one of these people that feel like, like as you approach a cliff edge? 
Do you get sort of a vertigo feeling? N- not really. I mean, I yeah, everyone gets nervous because you're you you know, you're two steps from your death. Right. You know, so a certain I, death no less. But yeah, I mean, I saw like I'm like, "Oh." You know, in Ireland they have these famous cliffs. Um and I can't remember the name of the cliffs right now, but anyway, Dover. They, that's the that's not no um and uh they uh you walk up to them and there's no guardrail or anything it's just a sheer drop yeah and every year a certain amount of tourists just fall to their death because they just start walking like oh ah. well, you know the and weird thing in the past couple of years have been people taking selfies and tumbling to their death mm-hmm. it happens over and over and I over i saw that on a super bowl commercial oh, oh. when they feed the big snickers to the world did you see oh that? i did see that yeah. one yeah what do you think this year but we haven't talked since then <sighs> A good I went, game, yeah, I, I went to sleep before it got interesting, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, I watched the first half, and then well, after half... Well, the first half, half was then, interesting, I thought. Yeah, but uh, I really would have liked to have seen, um, you know, uh, what's Are those his the name? Cliffs? Cliffs of Moor? Yeah, the Cliffs of Moor. There you yeah. go. Edvin yeah. knows. Thanks, Edvin. Um, but anyway, uh, I would like to go to the Grand Canyon. Me too. Look I'd over like the edge. There. Me too, I think it would yeah. be cool. And I'd like to sort of tackle, because I do feel afraid. I don't know if I feel more or less afraid than normal people, but I do feel a certain <laughs> sense of dread as I approach a sheer drop. Have you been to the top of the Eiffel Tower in Paris? No. Have no. you been to the top of the Tower in Cincinnati? Yes. Uh-huh. And that's pretty high. Yeah, that's one quarter the size of the real Eiffel yeah. Tower. So it's pretty, but it's pretty high up there. Yeah. Um, I have been to the top of the Washington Monument, but yeah, that is an, that's an enclosed space. Yeah. So it's a little bit not different the same. deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, you know, it's not like I go out of my way to go up on high stuff. But I mean, if it's there, if I can get up there, I'll go. You don't have a, a, any particular fear of heights. Nah, not yeah. really. Yeah. No. Well, let's talk about cliffhanger, Aaron. This, you know, it's funny. What did you call it last week? A side scrolling scrolling pl- action platform. Well, you've promotion. got some of that right. <laughs> this, uh, listen, I'm going to preface my look at this by saying this is about the damnedest game I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I grew up watching those Looney Tunes cartoons, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Warner Brothers cartoons, Bugs Bunny, The Road Runner. And also, if you've ever seen the movie The Villain, which is a movie where, they, where the villain tries to kill people. I'm sure that was at least part of the inspiration for this uh, movie. I think Kirk Douglas played played the villain, as I recall. Uh, this is the this game saw those old Looney Tunes cartoons and said, "Bam, let's make a game off of it," and they did, and it was Cliffhanger. So Cliffhanger released in '86. It was published by the New Generation Software. It sounds like a wrestling tag team. It sounds like one of those uh, like. Uh, production companies for like the bands like the uh, Detroit bands in like the early 80s wasn't there like the new sound generation or something like that you mean like Prince's band yeah that's right the that's new exa- power generation that's, it. that's exactly okay. what I'm thinking of uh, these guys published uh, games that included the quarters of Genon the custard kid I wow. like that one escape one and two I like this one Bo this is put on the list Jonah Barrington squash I think Ooh. we've mentioned that before we gotta get into some squash yeah Bo. I like this one, not in 3D. Okay, at least they're honest. <laughs> the Trash Man series. Hey, I love you. I love me some <laughs> Trash Man. That's a great game. And Monster Maze 3D. The fellow that wrote this particular uh, gimmick, James P. H. Day. He he did one game that's listed on World of Spectrum, Pilgrim's Progress. Oh, based, on, also the, be based on the John Bunyan novel, I'm don't, sure. Don't know what that is and don't know what that is. I know what Pilgrims are and I know what Progress is. I've seen other people have it. So this runs on your 48K uh, Spectorino and uh, has all the usual uh, gimmicks. It's got you know, joysticks, the redefinable keys. In fact, the first thing it does is ask you what the keys you mm-hmm. want are. Uh, it's in. It's presented in glorious, like, ma. Mono vision, but it's except that was the title screen uh, is supposed to look good, but I never all I saw was it came right up and said, What do you right. want your keyboard to be? That's so I guess the, the loading the screen, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I did see pictures of it, it looked good. Uh, this also came out on the C64 in a more colorful version, but I didn't play it, I just saw some pictures of it. Uh, and originally sold at a whopping seven pound 95p. Okay, so normal price spectrum game, correct? So, what is this crazy game? Well, what you've got here is a game where your job, you've got one job, right? <laughs> That's right. Your job is to stop the bandit from shooting up the canyon, mm-hmm. right? Just like the Old West. Mm-hmm. These bandits roll in, shoot up the canyon, leave. Right. No good. So your guy's name is Cliff, as in Cliff Hanger. Uh, and he does this through the most cockamamie gimmicks you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Now... Um, 
let's just start with the very first level. This game is divided up. Okay, for this game is as close as you're going to get to a laser disc game on the on the ZX Spectrum. That's mm -hmm. what it reminded me. This could have been a laser disc game. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Because this one of the is this one of those you get one shot at at games, mm -hmm. and in and it's got 51 different levels, which are basically there are levels broken into different screens. So like some levels have three and some levels have four different screens, and each screen has a great name. So I knew you'd be in heaven right away. <coughs> you play Cliff, and your job is to kill the bandit. Right. You start off on this level where there's a big, there's a there's a hole, there's a valley, mm -hmm. there's a curvature in like the canyon, mm -hmm. and there's a boulder, and your job is to kick this boulder and make it run over the bandit. Right. And it can even come back and get him on a rebound. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the game in uh, its easiest form. It's this game. Now I don't know how how did you have any luck getting into this? Um. It was challenging. Uh, I had a hard time consistently, like I was able to beat several levels, yeah. but I ha had a hard time consistently beating any of them. Uh, like, you know, I, w I always felt like I was lucking into things. Yeah. When I, because, well, this game is a pseudo three-dimensional perspective. Yeah. You see the bandit approach from afar. May sometimes. Yeah. And he uh and he has uh and his sprite grows in size. And you see the boulder, and where the boulder falls on the ground is sometimes not necessarily where you think it's gonna fall, and also the, the rate of speed that the bandit approaches is hard to gauge. Yes. Everything about this game I would sum up into three words hard to gauge. Yes. The uh, the bandit does have a, a hit three D depth. Mm -hmm. Like he, you see him coming. Like no, first of all, picture a desert. Picture a road. Right. I'd say seventy percent of the screens are a desert, a road, and you want something to trigger something to kill the guy coming down the road. So you see the guy approaching, mm -hmm. and the bad guy's not sashaying. He's not. He's not dodging. He's just, he, he just, doesn't give a crap. No. He's rolling in. In fact, as he approaches you, he takes the guns out and he starts shooting. He starts shooting. He's, up a, the very, he's a very animated little fellow. Yeah. And so your job is you have four directions and a fire button. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your job is your fire button does multiple things. It can shove a boulder, mm -hmm. it can activate a button, mm -hmm. it you can make you jump, mm -hmm. it can make you, uh, uh, it can make you push stuff, it can make you like, it's, it can make you do a, like whatever is needed. Like there's no thought process involved. It just whatever you need to do, the button will do. Right. So in the first couple of screens, it's stuff like shoot, hit, roll the boulder over the guy. There's one screen, and this is one of the more complex screens that I saw, where you have to. I, I, I thought this was funny too. You start out with like basically the screen is split into like two sections. You run. There's a radar range for whatever reason set up at the top of the canyon. I mean, a beeping radar. Well, yeah, range. It, it looks. Yeah, I mean, you can't think too hard about this, right? <laughs> you you jump off the can cliff. You jump into a train car. The mm -hmm. train car shoots you across the screen. You come out the top of the screen. You mm -hmm. run over real quick, and you kick the boulder down through the track on a guy that you can't the, see. There's a lot of Rube Goldberg esque there's, things the, going yes. on here. Now, I I did not get as far as I would have liked in this game. It's like you said, it's all timing. And it's one of those games that if you played this thing 400 million times, you could impress everyone with your awesomeness, mm -hmm. okay? Because I watched the guy do a playthrough of this, and it, the levels on this are insane. Yeah. There's stuff like there's there's uh, there's uh, teeter-totters, there's trampolines, there's stuff like a crane. You're doing stuff with magnets, there's yeah. a UFO. <laughs> It's it's out. It's completely insane. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know how this game necessarily picks the levels you go on because it seems like I would I, sometimes I would I would have to go back to one over and over until I passed it. I don't know. What I think is that there are there are sort of <laughs> tiers where there's like three levels per tier. Yeah. And so when you pass a certain number of levels, you move up to the set of levels on the. I next think you're tier. right because I printed out a list of all the levels. And they are tiered like oh, that. So that's probably okay. what it is. See, you've got like the first screen, the first level, Boulder Dash, Three Chances, and the Seesaw. Right. I got past those. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the great 
Railway Journey. That's the one where you have the radar range. Then the boomerang and the cannon. I mean, there are cannons or cannonettes if you're a Black Adder fan. Uh, there are little cannons. Uh, uh, the uh, boomerang, you also get a boomerang at some points, and the boomerang, th you throw it. Now, the boomerang, I had a heck of a time. That was one of the hardest ones for me, but I did get past it, judging where the thing was going to land. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, again, in these levels, like if you if you picture the 3D road again in your mind, yeah. um, the ledge where you are affecting the bandit is not in the same place every time. So it's not like once you get the the, the placement down, yeah. like when you when you're throwing the boomerang, you're hitting the bandit at a different point on the road than you are when you hit him with the boulder. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Now I looked up the. I had. In fact, I went directly to the text that came with this game, the scoring. Because the scoring of this is weird. And also, your lives are weird. Like, you can actually play for a good while, even though you're not succeeding. Right. Well, you only lose a life if you die. Right. And so, you only die when you <laughs> fall off the cliff, like the edge of the precipice. Which you can do every, on, on, on every any level. cliff. Yeah. So, here's how the scoring works. You start with five lives. As you progress to the levels, you gain a life after every three levels, but you will never have more than five. And points are awarded upon completion of each game level. Maximum points can be gained... By completing each game at the first attempt, then you get less points as you as you attempt. So probably some of these levels I was getting no points because I was so I, I sucked so bad at these things. You know, I know just because I looked at reviews on this, I know that this game is not the most popular Spectrum game uh, uh, because of the difficulty of it and the, and the fact that it's so uh, oddball. But I'm telling you, because I didn't know what to expect this week, and I'm coming off an illness, you know, I'm like, oh, here we go, what do we got this week? I, I just love this game. It is so, it is so, um, it shows you what it's going to do, and it does it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold back. I like the fact that they named the levels. Because yes, that, that's part of it. It adds so much personality <laughs> because you're you're sort of trying to figure out the joke as you play the level. Right, and sometimes, yeah. often the levels aren't apparent exactly what, like for example, there's there might be a level with a trampoline at the bottom and a boulder on the other side. Well, you've got to hit the trampoline and your guy will propel across the yeah. canyon. It's very you know. Looney Tunes-esque. Yeah, it's, it's very Roadrunner-esque. And these guys were clever because I'm thinking to myself, I watched a guy play about a th two-thirds of this and I'm like, my God, these things are really unique. Yeah, yeah. There's switch stuff. There's stuff with the train tracks. They, I mean, they'll use the multiple screens for different stuff, but they add different uh, mm -hmm. different elements to it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, there's the magnet stuff and the stuff with the 1,000-pound uh, weight. You Another know? thing they did right is they did not make your lives based on failure of attempts. Like, if you lost a life every time you missed the bandit, this game would get <laughs> old real fast. Yeah. The only way that you actually die is if you die. Like, if you run off the side of a cliff... Or if the bowler hits you in the head, or and then it's funny, and then you don't care, you know. Yeah. So, um, and there are some levels where you actually have to kill yourself. You have to run to the edge yeah. of the level and fall down with the ledge on top of the guy. What stuff. I also like is the fact that when you, on the rare times I succeeded, your guy sleeps up in the air like he's won the, uh, he's won the Super Bowl mm -hmm. or something. He's he's so happy. He's yeah. killed. And, and 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 often the acts of death are violent. You're dropping. You know, you're shooting a guy with a cannon. You're dropping boulders on this guy. I, mean, I don't know what this guy did to deserve this, but I mean, you almost feel bad. You're killing this guy so often, even when you don't kill him, nothing happens. You just walk. Well, off. you know, it's not it's not graphic. I mean, it's graphic <laughs> in that Looney Tunes oh, way where the boulder hits him and it flattens him down. Yeah, but I know? always you... felt bad for the coyote too after yeah. he's getting smashed. What what were your thoughts on this one, Boats? You know, th this one, I I, I felt. I love the concept. Yeah. I think it misses an execution. I think the levels are very, very clever. Yeah. This, this game wins top marks on level design. They should have figured out a way to make me feel like I was getting better at judging distance and things like that. Because um, I just, you know, whenever I would happen to kill the bandit, I knew in my mind that was totally luck. I couldn't do that again if I wanted to. And that's it not is gratifying. Yeah, it is gratifying. Um, I did have a look at the C64 version. Oh, did you? And they actually play a lot more into the movie um, <laughs> sort of theme. In this game, of course, you know, these are all different scenes, and they say coming up next and stuff like that. But in the in the, in the C64 version, there's actually a little cut scene where you see your guy and the bandit run across the screen like oh, a Pac-Man. Oh, wow, that's and great. And you see clap cards and things like that. And so they play upon that a little bit more. Of course, it's going to be more colorful. Um, if you're going to, if you can only play one version, uh, I would say that this is one of the few times where the C64 beats the Spectrum dead in its tracks in terms of not only colors and graphics, but also the entire theme. Uh, 
I love the theme of this. I mean, I and, and I will say the uh, again, I didn't play sixty four version. The, the you think the monochrome graphics would hurt this, but it's rendered very nicely. It and does. They, it, it, it does work in a weird way. It's almost like you're watching like a like one of the old silent films yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. I agree. And uh, um, there is a this has got that kind of free flowing, free form element. Mm-hmm. That you wouldn't expect in a game like this, it's very and so unique. that makes it difficult. But it also makes it very different. And it's this is the oh, kind of a puzzle. I mean, this game almost is hard to put into a into a category. It's so goofy, mm-hmm. you know. But if you ever liked the old spy versus spy stuff, or mm-hmm. or or what well, the Wiley Looney Tunes, Coyote, or yeah. or the, like I said, like the old westerns, like the old, the villain stuff. This is like, I mean, this is a game that was like perfect for that. Someone watched a ton of those and got a ton of ideas. Yeah. And I, like I said, it's the cleverness of this can't be understated or overstated. I liked it a ton, and I, I, I admit it's hard. I wasn't great at it, but I played it a lot. And it's the kind of game. Here's something else I like about it, Boaster. If you've got a quick way to load it, this is the perfect game just to kill some time. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't screw around. It comes up and get you set your keys up. You're good to go. Right now, I played this with the keyboard. I guess you played the stick. I played with the stick. How to yeah. how to go with the stick? Any problems? Yeah, yeah. fine. Uh, with, uh, you know, again, you're it's going to be weird. It's, you're going to feel weird. It also puts you in spots like right away. For example, we're watching a level where you're, you have to ride the train car. When you get off the train car, you're not just lined up with a boulder where you go over and hit it. You have to move yourself to get yourself in line. Right. That's going to take some practice. Mm-hmm. Knowing when to shoot the stuff across the highway, it's going to take some time to understand where the guy is. And that road has no markings on it, so they don't do any favors graphically yeah. in terms of... You know, it. one thing I, I wish that this game would have done, I just think it would have been a clever touch, is if it, it would have gone full on Wiley Coyote, and every time that you fail in your mission, you're the one that ends up getting the business. You know? <laughs> oh, like you um, end up getting a bullet right, fall on your exactly. head? Well, it'd be hard to pull that off. I, but I, I know, but I, yeah, I think that would be clever. Uh, you could have easily licensed this, and this could have been your Warner Brothers... Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, this could have... If they'd seen this, they'd have had to have gone for it. I mean, it's dead on. Mm-hmm. You, that guy could be the roadrunner as easy as pie. Yep. yep. I, I like to have seen uh, them. I mean, they do a good job with the, kind of the desert, but it, it'd be cool to like maybe a little western town action mm-hmm. or something like that it would have been kind of neat. But that's your. But now you're just you know that's nitpickery right. there. So, but I, I give this one my high praise from me. Hey, mm-hmm. I can't help what I like. You know me, Boaster. So. Um, uh, the World of Spectrum folks gave this one a 7.78 out of 10. Pretty good. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot of reviews in this, but I did get a couple. Crash, uh, number 30, gave them, only gave it 63%. Wow. Yeah, they really they really didn't like it that much, I guess. Man. Did we get any, uh, did we get any listener uh, looks at this one? We did. Or? We did. Uh, we got quite a few, in fact. Uh, Pixels at Dawn says, This game and Trash Man is the game I go to when I want to show people the uniqueness of the ZX Spectrum software library. There's nothing else like this. A game I call Roadrunner the Game. Yeah. And, and much better than the official licenses. Cowboys replace Wiley e. Coyote and the bird as they try to eliminate each other with ever more elaborate cartoon scenarios in this unique puzzle game. Tell that sentence ten times fast. I know. That was a tricky one. It's not going to win any awards for graphics or sound, but the gameplay is there and it's as addictive as hell. I've made this a favorite for more than one person over the years. Even more fun with a friend, 8.5 out of 10. Graham W. Vebke says, I want to love this mustard yellow cowboy puzzler, but alas, I am not hooked. This 6 out of 10 game does get a little repetitive, but the concept is at least unique, and there's some humor, too. It's certainly no Stallone movie tie-in, and that is probably for the best. But I can see someone enjoying the game more than myself. Chris Fold says, Meep, meep. Wile E. Coyote meets Boot Hill in this unique timing-based puzzle game. Enjoyable for 10-minute bursts that lacks long-term value for me as things soon feel a little repetitive but has what I love about the 8-bit era, originality. A 6 out of 10 for me. And the Dunk, Duncan Styles says, Sorry, Pixels at Dawn. I gave it a good go on multiple days, but I'm not a fan of Cliffhanger. Its incredibly simple premise of trial and error timing is quite frustrating. Whilst I understand that I'm looking... To time my actions to coincide with the bandit reaching certain parts of the scenery, I found the controls to be hit and miss. Maybe that is due to emulation. I did like the setting, though. Meep, and indeed, meep. Six out of ten from Duncan Styles. You know, I think I'm wired. First of all, I'm a shallow person, as you know. 
And so shallow gameplay like that, I like. And I mean, and, I, and also I can go back and just do something repetitive like this a million times. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, if it's quick, right? You know, uh, I, it's again, we, we mentioned it's the WarioWare type thing. It's like I, I'll play those goofy games because they're stupid, but they're quick. You know? Exactly. And uh, this game, and by the way, the sound is almost un, it, not mentionable on this. Yeah. There's very yeah. little, but the. Uh, yeah, this was this was one I, I'll look back on uh, and, and fondly. I will look back with fondness on this. I don't know that I'll spend a whole lot of time going back to it. Um, you know, maybe at Computer Club or something like that. Oh, I'll play this one again. But that's um, for sure. but this certainly is yet another example of the uniqueness of the Spectrum Software Library. You know, the Brent. This is right up the Brent's alley, by mm -hmm. the way. I guarantee it. All right, Aaron. <laughs> as we roll towards the end of the podcast. Uh, I'd like to take a moment and actually thank our Twitch subscribers. We forgot to do that last week. Oh, um, okay. You can uh, subscribe to our channel on Twitch. If you are an Amazon Prime uh, subscriber, you can actually sub to our channel for free, and it, it helps us out. Uh, you can join the club with Silver Streak 72, Retro Jerry, mm -hmm. Jost 80, Bike Me, 6MMBRX, Chris Folds, Rushi MSX, Brother Bill, the slow Norris Anguish Hauteur people. Go to go sub La Sooner. G Vebke, Macintosh Librarian, still adolescing, Frodo NL, and Wing Chun Wolf. Thank you guys for uh, supporting us on Twitch. And of course, you can always support us over on the Patreon as well, patreon.com slash our Sinclair. And uh, you can join the troop of guys um, like Hermsky, Andrew Waite, David Spencer, Cap'n Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbonaut, Graham Bebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn, Chris Folds, Paul Harrington, and Christopher Hassel. And a special thank you to Clive's Club member, Pixels at Dawn, for choosing this one for us. We really, really like this one. Good Thanks. one, Pix. Thanks a lot. Mm. Next week, Aaron. We're gonna. I mean, it's it's the middle of February. What happens the last week of February in the uh, world of sport? Sheing. Okay, guess. that's true. Maybe the XFL kicks off. We that's got an XFL game going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, you know what else happens? Pitchers and catchers report. Oh yeah. Oh, it's time. It's, it's time to, to head down to the old uh, uh, the orange leaves, the orange leaves, yeah, the citrus there. bowl, yeah. and all that. And so um, next week we're going to be taking a look at World Series baseball. For the baseball, ZX Spectrum. But baseball. Not a game oh I would expect on the ZX Spectrum. That'll be so fun. Will be, yeah, will be I didn't know they'd had any baseball games on there. Yeah, yeah. That so, is a stunner. And that comes to us from Clive's Club member Graham Bebke. So. All right, thank you, Graham. Yeah, I know Graham's a big baseball fan, isn't he? He is. He is. He's a big Mariners fan. Mm, yeah, yeah. can't have it all. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks as always for listening. We'll see you next week. Until then, rewind tape and press play.